Hi everyone, this is Ivan Anderson. I'm the guitar player in Sweet Fix, and this is my demo video for the MF-102 Ring Modulator by Moog. It's a pretty serious pedal, and I'm gonna show you what it can do, but I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how ring modulation actually works. It might seem complicated, but I'm gonna try to explain it in a way that's really easy to understand. First though, let's listen to what it sounds like. As you can hear, it's pretty weird. It's a pretty good, what the heck is that kind of effect. It's, it's pretty freaky. Uh, if you want to hear my clean tone, this is without the effect at all. It sounds like this. Kind of clean. And this is that same lick with the effect on. So as you can hear, it's kind of weird. And even, you know, fairly standard guitar cliches like this one. With ring modulation, don't really sound like cliches anymore. So you can really transform a lot of your ideas with this uh, with this pedal. Um, but it, it's not just for weird psychedelic stuff. You can do some more down to earth things with it. So I'll show you some other settings I like for that kind of stuff. This one, the weird one. I like to call that the Wendy Carlo setting because that bell-like, those weird bell tones to me sort of sound like something Wendy Carlos would do. But, you know, it's also very R2D2 too. It's kind of sci-fi. Okay, this other setting here, you can rein it in a little bit and hear a little bit more what your guitar sounds like without the insanity of total ring modulation. The setting's good for just like arpeggiating chords and, and retaining some of the actual harmonic properties of the chords you're trying to play. So there's that, and then you can even get some really old school tremolo type effects out of this. So here's an example of that. You can hear that's like a pretty cute old school surf rock type of thing. sounds like a fender amp or an early tremolo effect so how come this pedal can do totally weird outer space stuff and also fairly classic old school tremolo stuff well before we look at the knobs uh, let's talk about what ring modulation actually is for a second so what happens is um, you play your guitar again that's just a standard a flat major bar chord and the sound of that is just a waveform. Like all sound, it's a wave. It's a fairly complicated waveform. And that goes into this pedal, and then it gets multiplied by a different waveform that we call the carrier frequency. Uh, and that's just a basic sine wave. But what happens when you multiply a waveform like this with the carrier frequency in here is that you get a new waveform which sounds weird and different. It sounds like that. And the instruction manual that comes with this pedal is pretty serious. It talks about the science of multiplying waveforms and how you get what you get. And I, I recommend it. It's a, it's a serious instruction manual that takes that stuff on. Now, I personally find it sort of difficult just to close my eyes and understand what the multiplication of waveforms is going to sound like. That, that's sort of hard for me to just call up in my imagination even having read the Moog instruction manual. But there's another way of looking at it that's actually a little more intuitive, at least in my opinion, which is that if we take a step back for a second, what happens when you multiply waveforms is that it, it creates a form of amplitude modulation. Now what's that? Amplitude modulation is just changing the amplitude of the wave. 
uh, and amplitude is just how loud the wave is. So when you multiply waveforms, what you're accomplishing is you're changing the volume, you're changing the loudness of the wave. And that, if you think about it, is just what a tremolo effect does, right? When you get an old school tremolo effect, it's getting louder and softer and louder and softer. So tremolo, you may already know this, is just a form of amplitude modulation. Okay, so if this pedal is just doing amplitude modulation, or tremolo, then how come sometimes it sounds really weird like that? Right, that doesn't sound like a tremolo effect at all, that just sounds totally bizarre. Okay, well the reason is, actually you can sort of hear it start to happen, right? If we start with a pretty slow, classic tremolo effect and make it faster, that's pretty fast. That's probably where most tremolo effects top out, but we can keep going. And there you can you can hear it start to get weird. You can hear the weirdness start to creep in. There it is. And now it doesn't really sound like tremolo, now it sounds like ring modulation. So so what happened? Well what happened was the beating of the tremolo itself got so fast that it, it took on the properties of a pitch. Now keep in mind all pitch is is something happening a certain number of times a second. That's that's all pitch is. It's, it's frequency. Um, so if you think about a jackhammer, this, the sound the jackhammer makes is not a note, right? It's just the piston hitting the pavement really hard. It's noise. But if you hit the pavement really fast like a jackhammer does, that noise starts to become note -y. It's not really a pitch, like you couldn't hold a tuner up to it. But the faster a jackhammer goes, the higher the pitchy noise sort of gets. And if you slow it down, the pitchy noise gets lower too. Uh, and that's basically what this tremolo was doing. The pattern of louder, softer, louder, softer, louder, softer. That pattern gets so fast that the louder, softer pattern itself basically gets blurry and we start to hear it as its own pitch. But it's a weird pitch because it's distinct from the notes you're playing, right? It doesn't really have anything to do with whatever chord you pick. It, it has to do with the combination of what you're playing and then that weird super fast tremolo effect. So I like to think of ring modulation as just a tremolo pedal that can go super fast. And it can go so fast that it, it really gets weird. So intuitively, that's how I look at ring modulation. It's basically tremolo that gets really, really fast. So having said all that, I think the challenge with an effect like ring modulation is to use it in a way that's musical and not just weird for the sake of weird. One trick I've found is to use an expression pedal and set it to mix. And so that way, as you're playing, you can bring the effect in and out with the expression pedal and sort of rein in the effect, keep it from being distractingly insane. So I'm going to leave you with the recording of a guitar solo of me playing and using that technique. Now I have a whole separate video where I talk more about using expression pedals with the MF-102 and what the knobs on the MF-102 are doing and what some of its expanded functions are. But since all that's a little involved, it's a separate video. In the meantime, here's me playing a solo with an expression pedal and the ring modulator. And I'll also add that I'm using an Earthquake or Bit Commander to get that synthy fuzz tone that you're about to hear. Thank you. Last thing, I also got sort of precious with the takes, so I don't have video footage of this, so instead you're gonna be looking at pictures I drew in high school. Thank you, bye. <laughs>